Hey my friends, how are you doing? Today I have eight awesome tricks from the community that you wrote and suggested to me. So your secret sauce presented by me today. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. That is super important. Thank you very much. Let's get started. So the first one is by Xparda and that really blew my mind. And this is about embedded documents in Affinity Photo. So an embedded document basically means you have another Affinity Photo file that you can place inside of an Affinity Photo file and then still edit it afterwards because it still has all the layers and effects and adjustments and all these kind of stuff. So here we have one with a laptop and we can go to File and Place and um, okay now it says text layer sometimes it does this I don't know why it's a bit annoying but here we have it so here you can see I have another uh, affinity photo file I called it clone.af photo you can call it whatever you want of course and I will place this into my affinity photo file and the cool thing now is I can use a live perspective filter. So down here you have your live filters under your layers. Click on that and select perspective. And so it is applied to that layer and this will not, and this is the important and mind blowing part, it will not render it into a pixel layer, which means you can now Put this into the right perspective for mock-ups of phones and laptops and posters and pictures and frames and kind of advertisements on walls and all the kind of stuff and you can see here you can put it in the right perspective you of course have to color adjust and all these kind of things but the most important part here is the perspective thing and this is still a 2d file so if i double click on that this will open up the embedded file and here you can do whatever you want so for example i can place another picture for example of a bad wolf um, fitting for our sheep there we go and now when I click back to my main file this is applied into perspective so this is extremely helpful for creating master files for mock-ups where you can afterwards fill in any kind of content and it will always be in the right perspective in the right place okay Let's go to the second trick. And this is from uh, Dasinski Media. I hope I said that right. And it is kind of similar. I changed a little bit, I think, what he adjusted, be, uh, what he suggested, because I think this is new in 1.7. So you basically do the same thing, but you do it with a text layer. And the cool thing about that, of course, is uh, let's write here test, for example, that you can afterwards still edit the text. So let's again go to live filter and perspective to apply it to that. And now I can just pull this here. Uh, so for example I have the text you want to have some information um, about the laptop and I can simply put this here uh, so it looks like it's written in the air next to the laptop like that and the cool thing of course is I can always go in here and change the text to whatever I want I can write easy now and this will still be in the right position the next awesome trick is by Paul Brun and this is about assets so over here we have our asset window and when you don't see it you can go to view and then studio and there in the list here it says assets make sure there's a hook next to that. In one of my videos I said you have to add assets one by one by one but Powell said that's not true. You can actually and I will just create some random assets here from basic shapes so you see um, what I'm doing. So we have one, two, three. Let's make another one uh, to have four of them. There we go. Okay, so we can now select all of them like you select all of the layers click on the top layer hold shift and click on the lowest layer to select all of the layers. Um, in that range, of course, and then you go simply to, um, okay, we have to create a new category first, and then we go to add from selection, and boom, we have four assets inside 
of our asset collection which is very nice and you can of course import like 50 or 100 shapes like that if you have all of them inside of an open document uh, that sometimes you can download collections from the internet with all of these kind of assets in them so that is also super helpful okay let's go on to the next suggestion and this comes by David Allen and this is about uh, removing things from the background and he said to me why don't you just use um, the fill function for that so what you can do and you can see you have seen I've rasterized the layer because it has to be a pixel layer it can't be an image layer you can see let's call this zero zero here in the brackets it has to say pixel for this to work so what you can do is you simply use your selection like the freehand selection and select every anything you want on your screen like that uh, which makes it very handy and fast and then you just go to edit and fill and in painting yes sorry and apply and it calculates a little bit and boom the part where you have selected something is replaced by something that is basically fitting with the background which of course with grass is a little bit easier but you can see it works so it's a really cool trick do it just use it okay let's go to the next one and this one is um rotate a clone brush which is also very cool and i will show you uh this was about an episode where i talked about brushes and i said you can rotate the brush tip with your arrow keys on your keyboard and he said you can do the same thing with your clone brush and here we have the clone brush so for example uh, let's make this maybe a little bit bigger okay now we have the sheep head so i i click alt to select the source boom so now i have placed the source and this is the sheep head and you can see here in the middle i indeed have the sheep head so now what i can do is when i use my arrow keys you will see that this starts to rotate and this can be extremely useful if you want to clone something to a position that is uh in a different rotation than the original source that you copy it from so that is very helpful so again use the clone brush select the source by holding the alt key and clicking at the position where you want to select the source from and then use the arrow the left and right arrow keys to rotate the clone brush super interesting and super helpful the next awesome trick comes from Laurent Benes and we have to switch over to publisher for that because this is about filling in sample text so use your frame text tool and draw out a frame and then when you right click into that frame it gives you a command to insert filler text and the cool thing about that is that this text will automatically fill your box with as much text as you need and you can of course select the text and change the size of the text to any kind of design you want and you can change the font of the text and all these kind of things so you can prepare your design without needing to have already written some text in here and of course if you want to you can even um, connect these boxes uh, to each other and you can see that the text is going to swap over to the next box filling it too and if you move this for example i can also see the text is going to move in both boxes so that can be super helpful okay let's go to our next trick and that comes from tony smith and he says that you can save layouts as assets which is really cool again talking about a finished publisher so uh when you make a cool layout and i didn't really make a cool, uh, cool uh, layout here but let's create a new category and you can rename that for example layouts or let's call it my layouts like that good um you can for example use everything you have created so far this is not a great layout but i'm just showing you um how this works uh let's make it like this move this a little bit over maybe like that okay so now i select all of these layers and probably group them together and now i can go here to my layouts and add from selection 
and boom, I have my layout in here as you can see. So now if I delete this group and I would start another file, I can just pull this out and place it into my publisher file, which means you can pre-create layouts that you use often and that you like and can just save them as assets. This saves a lot of time and is a really amazing trick. And now we already come to our last trick, which is again, super awesome. And this is about multi-stroke and multi-fill. So, and I think this is what um, uh, Johnson Settler meant by that. So when you create a shape, for example, like this, and here it is already applied. Um, let's wait a second. No, it's not applied actually. Okay, cool. Uh, so you can see here, of course, I can change my fill color when I'm in the appearance tab. By the way, if you wonder, where can I find my appearance tab? Again, as always, you go to view and then to studio and then to appearance where and make sure there's a little hook to that. And then it should be on your screen somewhere. Maybe not in that position, maybe it's on the other side, but it is there. Um, okay, so what you can do here is you can change the fill and you can change the stroke. And for example, here when I click, I can resize the stroke, I can give the corner another shape, all these kind of cool things. I can position it on the outside, on the middle, on the inside, all these kind of cool things. But the more important part is you can see down here, it says add stroke, add fill. So that means I can add another stroke and this is basically multi-stroke because now on the same shape, I have two different strokes. You might wonder why would I need that? Here's an example what you can do with that. Let's fill this with any kind of color. Let's make it black, for example, and make it a little bit thicker uh, like that and put it on the outside like this. Give it a different shape, uh, for example, like that. And now when I set and this where it says normal, that's actually blend mode. When I set this to erase, like that, it cuts away from the other stroke that I have around that. And you can see that now it starts to look a little bit like a picture frame. So like this, as if you can imagine this to be a picture frame hanging on your wall, just a blue thing inside, you can replace it with something else if you want to. But um, there you have two strokes on one shape and you can do the same with um, the fill color and stuff like that, which can also lead to really cool effects and really cool, <coughs> sorry, interesting design things. Okay, these have been the eight awesome tricks suggested by you. Keep the secret sauce coming. I'm looking in the comments for seeing amazing tricks that I can put in the next video. Thank you and give a thumbs up if you like this video. Have a good day. Bye.